Good evening, folks, and welcome to the City of Geneva's City Council Chamber. Tonight we have the City Council meeting and the Committee of the Whole meeting. It's my pleasure to open the City Council meeting and ask the City Clerk to please ask for the roll call. Bowring? Here. Bruno? Here. Ruby? Here. Tilburg? Here. Kasserat? Here. Marks? Here. Mayor? Here. Paschke? Here. Swanson? Here. We always begin our city council meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance, and tonight I am particularly honored to invite William Malachy to please lead us in the pledge. And family, excuse me, yes, of course. She's bailing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well done, thank you. Item three on the agenda are public hearings, special items, and presentations. Item three A is to consider the mayor's appointment to the fifth ward alder person vacancy. The council knows and received on Friday afternoon the recommendation provided by alder persons Bruno and alder person Swanson, and of course myself, to appoint Mr. William Malachy to the fifth ward vacancy. I will entertain a motion to do exactly that. So moved. <laughs> I, I, Marks was there and Give Swanson. There, there you go. Alder person Marks makes the motion. Alder person Swanson makes the second. Any questions from the dais regarding this matter? A roll call vote will be in order. City Clerk Kellick, please take the roll. Marks? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Paschke? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bowring? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Kasserag? Aye. Mr. Malachy, this is now your opportunity, unless you choose to withdraw, <laughs> to take the oath of office. Our city clerk will administer the oath to you. We invite you to invite anyone who you wish to join you while doing so. All yours. Mr. Malachy is now signing a document that provides us with social security number and bank accounts, and then he will take his seat at the dais. Welcome aboard, sir. Item four, amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments this evening? 
Item five is the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be routine by this council and all those items can be considered and acted upon with one motion. Is there such a motion? So moved. Bruno makes the motion, Bowery makes the second. City Clerk Kellick, please take the roll. Bruno? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Kilbert? Aye. Kasserag? Aye. Malecki? Aye. Malecki? Sorry. Marks? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Paschke? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bowery? Aye. Omnibus agenda has been Excuse me. The omnibus agenda has been approved with 10 affirmative votes, zero nay votes. We jump to <coughs> item number seven under reports. Item 7A is to recommend acceptance of the strategic plan, workshop report, and priorities for 2026. So moved. Motion by Alderperson Bowring, seconded by Alderperson Patchkey. Any comments or questions regarding this prior to accepting the report as prepared? City Clerk Kellick, please take the roll. Bowery? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Kasserad? Aye. Maliki? Aye. Marks? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Paschke? Aye. Swanson? Aye. With 10 votes in the affirmative, zero votes in the negative, and zero absent, item 7A has been approved. And the report and priorities for 2026 have been also approved. We jump to item eight, municipal bills for payment. We kindly ask our city clerk to read the bills in their aggregate for our consideration. Municipal bills for payment total $3,541,135.79. Mayor, I move that we approve and pay the bills as read, the individual items that add up to that amount can be found in tonight's city council packet on the city website. Alderperson Bruno makes the motion to approve the bills as presented, which are available on the city's website and in each council member's packet. Is there a second? Seconded by Bowring. Any additional questions other than those posted online this afternoon? Clerk Kellick, please take the roll. Bruno? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Kilbert? Aye. Kasserad? Aye. Maliki? Aye. Marks? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Paschke? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bowring? Aye. The bills have been approved by this council with 10 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero council members absent. We jump to <clears throat> item number 10, presentation of ordinances and resolutions. Item 10A is to consider resolution 2024-120, authorizing the execution of an amendment to the professional services agreement with Baxter and Woodman in an amount of $21,823.56 for a total not to exceed amount of $83,323.56 for wastewater plant anaerobic digester engineering services for building inspection and construction services. Motion by Patchkey, seconded by Bowring. Ms. Dawkins. Okay, so the City Council passed resolution 202265 authorizing execution of a professional services agreement with Baxter and Woodman for the bidding, inspection, and construction services of the cleaning and inspection of the anaerobic digesters at the wastewater treatment plant. Baxter and Woodman is requesting an amendment to the contract due to unanticipated hours required for field observation, review of unexpected conditions, and other unanticipated engineering work, as was detailed in the memorandum found in tonight's packet. Costs associated with the amendment will be accommodated within the existing budget and reflected in a future budget amendment if necessary. Um, the project is complete and the digesters are back in service. If you have additional questions, we do have Superintendent Van Gescom back in the back who's happy to answer any of those. From the dais, are there any questions for Superintendent Van Gescom? Seeing none, sensing none. Clerk Kellick, please take the roll. Paschke? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bowering? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Kasserad? Aye. Maliki? Aye. Marks? Aye. Mayor? Aye. With 10 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero council members absent, resolution 2024-120 has been approved. Item 10B is to consider resolution 2024-121, declaring surplus certain vehicle and equipment and authorizing purchase of a 2025 Peterbilt tractor and MTM trailer 
in an amount of $222,302.22 from Peterbilt of Wisconsin Incorporated doing business as JX Truck Center, Truck Center, excuse me, Wadsworth, Illinois. Motion by Bowring, Second. seconded by Patchkey. Okay, so the fiscal year 25 budget has funds allocated for the replacement of a tractor trailer combination. The tractor trailer is used to haul stone, black dirt, spoil, and snow. This vehicle is recommended for replacement by the fleet maintenance supervisor due to years in service, parts availability, reliability, and annual repairs. The tractor, um, we're, the tractor that we're requesting to purchase is also the last one on the lot that meets our specifications. We're utilizing the cooperative purchasing agreement with Sourcewell for the purchase of a 2025 Peterbilt tractor and MTM trailer. The 2000 tractor trailer will be declared surplus and sold through IBID or on a similar platform. And again, we still have Superintendent Van Gescom with us for any questions. Questions for the superintendent from the dais. Clerk Kellick, please take the roll. All right, Bowery? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Kasserag? Aye. Maliki? Aye. Marks? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Paschke? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Resolution 2024-121 has been approved by 10 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero council members absent. Item 10C, consider resolution 2024-122, accepting supplemental agreement and change order number two to the professional services agreement with Stanley Consultants for Geneva Southeast Development Substation and Distribution Project in a total amount of $25,920 for a new total amount not to exceed 647,452 bucks. Mayor with the motion, Kasserag with the second, Ms. Dawkins. Okay, so the city of Geneva originally entered into a professional service agreement with Stanley Consultants in 2014. That contract was amended in 2018 and subsequent supplemental agreement change order number one was accepted in October of 2022. Due to delays in the award of a Rebuild Illinois grant and the administration requirements of the grant, Stanley has submitted change order number two for the project. This change order includes additions due to the extended completion date of the project into 2026, as well as increased administration costs for the grant. A schedule of additional hours and hourly rates and classifications were included in this evening's packet. And in the back, we also have Superintendent Holton with us this evening to answer any additional questions. Questions for the superintendent, Mr. Holton, from the dais. Seeing none and sensing none, Clerk Kellick, please take the roll. Mayor? Mayor, aye. Paschke? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bowring? Aye. Bruno? Aye. Ruby? Aye. Kilberg? Aye. Kasserag? Aye. Maliki? Aye. Marks? Aye. With 10 affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero council members absent, resolution 2024-122 has been approved by this comment, excuse me, by this council. <laughs> uh, next on the agenda, folks, is public comment. I would indulge the city council and those attending for a, a point of personal privilege, if I may. And thank you for indulging me. Members of the city council, ladies and gentlemen here in the council chamber, those tuning in remotely, let me kick off by being crystal clear that this administration appreciates, values, respects, and in large part is indebted to the more than 1,300 businesses, their owners, employees, customers, and clients for their investment of time, talent, and treasure, helping to create the mortar that strengthens the brand we all strive to achieve for Geneva, a good product, a good story, a good experience for all who call Geneva home and all who visit. Our Geneva business environment we celebrate is replete with independent, regional, and national organizations that together provide a myriad of shopping, dining, service, and entertainment opportunities. We thrive because of our diverse business offerings and endure the vicissitudes of an ever-growing discerning consumer market because Geneva is a responsive, adaptive, resilient, and forward-thinking business community. To my friends in the media who have called seeking an interview and or statement, to the people who have emailed me, 
texted, called, or even tagged me on social media requesting a statement. My decision not to respond to your inquiries was not out of reticence, fear, or reprisal, or certainly not politics. My decision not to respond is owed exclusively and appropriately to my fidelity to the process that requires the independent investigation of the charges drawn, alleged, and submitted to the city. Responding even in the most articulate and sanitized way to avoid the appearance of interference is still interference. For me or the city council members, any appointed official or employee of the city of Geneva to engage beyond the brief and direct acknowledgement of the charges filed by City Administrator Dawkins on Tuesday, November 12, 2024 at 8.47 a.m. While the formal charges of an ethics violation was working its way through the process established via city ordinance would have been irresponsible at the very least and risk irreparable damage to the impartiality of the review by the city's ethics advisor at the very worst. Now, in the spirit of transparency, perhaps hyper-transparency, I am going to share with all of you this evening the timeline of events surrounding the complaint filed with and to me and the city clerk via email on November 11th at 3 o'clock by attorney Segneri requesting that said complaint be heard by the City of Geneva's Ethics Commission. Monday, November 11th, 2024 at 3 p.m., email and ethics complaint from attorney Segneri was received in my mailbox and Clerk Kellick's mailbox. On that same day, November 11th, 2024, at 4.24 p.m., I emailed Attorney Segneri's email to City of Geneva Ethics Commission Advisor Charles Radovich, and I courtesy copied Clerk Kellick and City Administrator Dawkins with the following message from me. Attorney Radovich, I have received the following correspondence from Attorney Linda Segneri, and passing along to you for review and consideration as the City of Geneva's Ethics Commission Advisor. Please advise me whether I should respond confirming receipt of said correspondence as requested by Attorney Segneri in the closing paragraph of the attached letter. November 11, 2024, at 6.27 p.m., I received the following email from Attorney Radovich. Clerk Kellick and City Administrator Dawkins were courtesy copied. Mayor. Please have the city administrator or city clerk respond to the requester as follows. The city acknowledges receipt of your communication. On November 12th, 2024, at 8.47 a.m., city administrator Dawkins responded to attorney Segneri as requested by and in accordance with city attorney Radovich's direction. On November 14th, 2024, at 10.39 a.m., City of Geneva Executive Assistant to the Mayor and City Administrator, Jean Fernari, emailed Attorney Segneri, the City of Geneva's Ethics Advisor, again, Chuck Radovich, review and decision of her request to convene the City of Geneva's Ethics Commission and mailed said review and response to the law offices of Attorney Segneri via certified mail, which is required by city code. The letter read as follows. Dear Ms. Segneri, I am the city attorney for the city of Geneva, as well as the appointed ethics advisor for the city of Geneva. Mayor Burns has referred your November 11, 2024 email correspondence to him for a response in my capacity as corporate authorities, legal counsel, and ethics advisor. Your email to Mayor Burns requesting email addresses of the members of the City Ethics Commission purportedly to provide them with a copy of your correspondence as complaint for the Ethics Commission. As you know, the City of Geneva has adopted regulations of ethical conduct, political activities, and the solicitation or acceptance of gifts by officers and employees of the City of Geneva, which are codified under Article H of Chapter 6, Municipal Officers and Employees of Title I, Administration of the City Code. The Ethics Commission has very limited authority and duties to only investigate and conduct hearings on complaints involving prohibitive political activities or gift ban activities. 
These prohibited political activities and gift bans are listed in section 1-6H-3 and 1-6H-4 of the city code. Moreover, complaints which can be heard by the Ethics Commission must be signed, notarized, written complaints, and the substance of those written complaints must allege a violation of either prohibited political activity or gift ban activity. After a review of your correspondence addressed to the mayor and city clerk, the score, the, your correspondence does not constitute a complaint under Article 8 of the city code because it is not notarized and there are no allegations within the correspondence which allege a violation of prohibited political activities or gift ban. Accordingly, your correspondence will not be referred to the city's ethics commission for reasons stated above. Should you wish to correspond with the members of the city's ethics commission, you can do so through me. On Friday, November 15th, 2024, at 11.09 a.m., City of Geneva Executive Assistant to the Mayor and City Administrator, Jean Fernari, forwarded a copy of Attorney Segneri's ethics complaint letter, dated 11 11 24, as well as the City of Geneva's ethics advisor, Charles Radovich's letter in response to Attorney Segneri, dated 11 13 2024, to the full City Council for their information. That is the end of the official timeline. I offer my thanks to City Administrator Dawkins, City Attorney and Ethics Commission Advisor Charles Radovich, and City Attorney Scott Finson, as well as Executive Assistant to the Mayor and Administrator Gene Fernari for their focused attention to this matter professionally, thoroughly, and impartially. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am well aware that the impact of these last seven days will not soon vanish, for there is no balm no supplement, nor magic elixir that will soothe the sting we've all experienced. And I am equally well aware that time alone will not heal all. I do, however, believe with all my heart that if we, all of us who call Geneva home, choose to learn from this experience by accepting with clear eyes and open minds that these seven days in November 2024 may well provide the impetus toward advancing and achieving one of the core principles of our 2030 strategic plan that we just adopted to cultivate and curate a more welcoming community where diversity of perspectives, thoughts, and expressions are welcomed and discussed respectfully. I know, and I'm confident all of you know, that our task ahead will not be easy, yet, as a resident of Geneva for more than 50 years, I am confident that we will succeed, because we've always succeeded when overcoming challenges. With that, the floor is open for public comment. I invite anyone to join the podium. We will begin on this side of the room. Those of you joining us, you guys can haggle over who goes first or what have you, but when you join us, feel free to share your name. We do not need your address. I remind you, please direct your comments to me as chair of the committee. I also remind those who perhaps will speak following our first speaker and subsequent speakers to please not repeat what's already been said. Again, direct your comments toward me, and we will be kick things off with whomever would like to speak first. <laughs> Sir, you're more than welcome to if you like, if nobody else is. Good evening. Good evening. I'm a local business owner here in Geneva, and tonight I'm here to address a serious and disturbing pattern of behaviors by Martha Paschke, who has used her position to target local businesses, plural, uh, based on their perceived political beliefs. I have emails that show exactly how Alderwoman Paschke operates, and they should alarm everyone in this room. In July, specifically the 23rd of 2022, she sent a message to a local coffee shop, accusing them of aligning with groups that she personally opposes. She wrote, and I quote, a lot of people are pretty upset to see that you have publicly aligned yourselves with Public Square and just want some clarification about why you chose to do that. Then in the same email came the veiled threat. 
you're welcome to have different values, quote, sorry, quote, you're welcome to have different values than your customers, but making that public is guaranteed to have an effect, end quote. Let that sink in. An elected official telling a small business that expressing their values will bring consequences. This isn't a conversation, it's intimidation. If that weren't enough, she doubled down, writing, quote, I do feel that it is fair to assume that is what you want your customers to see, end quote. Fair to assume? Based on what? These statements aren't presumptive. They're meant to pressure and shame. This is the tone of someone using their position to buy a small, to, to bully a small woman-led business into silence. What should happen is that Martha Paschke should be so embarrassed by her behavior that she resigns immediately. But we all know that won't happen. Bureaucrats like her rarely think they'll face consequences and sadly rarely do. They see themselves as superior and immune to accountability. At the very least, this council should appoint a special investigator to look into her actions. I have the emails from the 2022 incident and would love to provide them. And I personally know that two other families have experienced harassment from Martha Paschke also. This isn't about one person's bad behavior. It's a reminder of why government influence should be limited because officials like Martha inevitably use it to punish those that they disagree with. Geneva deserves better than this. It's time for accountability. Martha should step down or this council should step up and hold her to the standard of conduct this community expects. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Whoever wants to come up next, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kathy, and I'm a res resident of Kane County. Um, let me start out by saying that um, I don't live in Geneva, but we frequent the businesses and restaurants um, in this beautiful city on a regular basis. What brought me here tonight was the boycott list that Martha Paskey, administrator, promoted on social media for all of us to see, something she can never take back. Martha's total ignorance and, quite frankly, stupidity is now not what I've ever seen from an alder person, a face of Geneva. Her lack of control was what, for losing an election? She became unhinged and intentionally and maliciously attempted to hurt people and businesses that don't sit on the same political side of the aisle as her is quite frankly extremely disturbing. None of this, whether it be total ignorance, cluelessness, or having lack of control, none of this makes for a good defense for someone who supposedly serves the public. Her actions cannot be undone. What she has done is 100% unacceptable, and regardless of who wrote the list, regardless of her taking down the post, the damage cannot be undone. Even if she publicly apologizes, none of this can be undone. What I find mind-boggling is a few days after posting this boycott list, just a few days after, she posted on her Facebook on National Kindness Day. <laughs> I, I shook my head and laughed because the... I, uh, when, I, when I saw this, because honestly, she did the most unkind thing she could possibly have done, and now she's posting on National Kindness Day. I find the lack of intelligence on all of this is in plain sight, and this is not anyone that you want to be the face of Geneva. Does she even realize that, uh, that this will affect these businesses for years to come? I think not. Did she even consider that this is people's lives and livelihoods she decided to mess with. I think she did, or she wouldn't have done what she did. Instead of posting something on kindness or something for the good of the public for the city, she decided to attack businesses. And the thing of it is that she can't take the list down. But it's out there, and the people that hate Republicans will always remember this and will never visit these businesses again. And that's unacceptable. She will forever financially hurt these businesses, and I pray to God that she learns a hard, hard lesson on this when she moves on in life. Did she even consider that her list could financially hurt the city, the county that she works in? The amount of businesses that these businesses have brought into Kane County. 
Did she consider that? I think the answer is no. But common sense alone should have told her all of this before she did what she did. And because it didn't enter her mind, it tells you she doesn't have common sense on top of everything else she lacks. Her actions are the total opposite of what an older person should be doing for the city that she represents. Finally, her LinkedIn profile states three things, two of which totally contradict her actions. One is her aim to improve systems so all people thrive. Well, that's not true. The second is she's rooted in integrity. Well, that's definitely not true. The third is she wants to make an impact. Well, congratulations, you made an impact. You made a good one at a big cost for a lot of people. Speak directly to the chair, Kathy, if I could trouble you. You wasted our time. You've wasted this time of the city and the council. Time is money, and you've brought a lot of negativity, publicity to Geneva. Whether it be by expulsion or resignation, it's quite obvious that Martha Paschke needs to step, step down. There is no way she should be serving the public in any manner. I think she's left you no choice. I surely hope she's left you no choice because the last thing I want to do is be questioning the City Council of Geneva on this matter. If she had integrity at all, she would have acknowledged her foolishness, she would have already stepped down, and she, would have created the spect she, she wouldn't have created the spectacle that this has become and wasted all of our time. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, we'll let you guys work it out yourselves. There you go. Um, <clears throat> hello, my name is Trisha Miller. I am a resident of Geneva. I am not going to talk about Alderperson Paschke as that I would be repeating topics. Um, I would like to talk about the idea that a representative of a government cannot be a um, admin for a Facebook group, public or private. Kane County Conservatives has three admins. There is Andrew Lerario, and I'm very sorry, Andrew, if I did not say your name correctly. He is currently the Public Works Committee person for Campton Hills. And while that is not an elected official, he is appointed by the government um, and has control over contracts and where those contracts come from. Jeffrey Meyer is a former ECC Board of Trustees chairman, and I, of course, do not know how long he has been an admin. However, he is still an admin. Then there's Eric Nel Nelson, who is currently a Board of Trustees member for In Plainfield and the Republican Precinct Committee person. They are all admins for a Facebook group. So if the problem is that Alderperson Paschke is an, is an Alder person, and an admin for a Facebook group, and then maybe they need to look inside their own group as well. The other thing I would like to point out is that this ethics complaint was spearheaded by the group Awake Illinois. Awake Illinois and their leader, Shannon Adcock, have been listed as a hate group by the National Civil Rights Organization, the Southern Poverty Law Center. In 2022, they spearheaded a protest against a drag bingo event at the Downers Grove Public Library. That resulted in the librarians receiving envelopes full of bullets and threats sent to their phones. I, while I cannot confirm that Shannon Adhoc and Awake Illinois set those people up to be threatened, it was done in their name and in their movements mission. Currently in Ogle County there is an elementary school that sent, uh, sent communications out to the families because they have a teacher who is trans. Awake Illinois caught wind of this and has since took it upon themselves to protest that school, an elementary school. They are also on their public webpage posting that trans is a contagion. These are the people that have filed an ethics complaint against Alderperson Paschke, and that is my word on that. Welcome, Hello. sir. Yes, my name is Frank Bogner. I'm a citizen of Geneva. Um, didn't know. Councilwoman Paschke at all or anybody else here before this uh, transpired. 
Um, I'm here uh, just to have you think about trust and professionalism that everybody expects this organization to have. When you make your decisions now based upon business decisions, what um, organizations are allowed in our community, will those people know that your decisions are based upon the facts they're given? Or will politics now be something that everybody thinks about? I think you open up this whole organization for liability and possible uh, litigation when you make a decision that's close. And um, with uh, Councilwoman Paschke still on the board, and uh, I know there's all kinds of political persuasions here, so I, I, don't, uh, I know that's America. That's what we're supposed to have. However, when you post this and make it uh, your charge, um, you opened everybody up here, in my opinion, for a lack of confidence and uh, future decisions being weighed with that in mind. And so I think you should think very carefully um, as you decide where you're going to go with this, whether you want somebody like that that has that background is that that person that just spoke a couple people ago said, this doesn't go away. Time doesn't take it away what was posted. Um, eloquently stated, time heals a lot of wounds, but uh, the Internet keeps everything. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Good evening. First, I want to thank the mayor and the officials who took this complaint seriously and treated it professionally. That's how things should be done. My name is Ellen Young. We've lived here 45 years. I have never, until recently, seen the kind of personal attacks on elected officials. If we disagree with an elected official, and I disagree with plenty, then we should be disagreeing on the issues. Personal attacks and death threats have no place in our community. I don't think the council has the answer to that. I don't have the answer to that. But I think your professional approach to this issue helps reduce and bring down the temperature a bit. And I would suggest to everybody that it's time to talk to each other about issues. What we heard, in addition to issues, were a lot of personal attacks. And if there have indeed been death threats, it's wrong, and it shouldn't happen. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Hello, um, I'm Monica Noonan, and I just wanted to take a moment as a Geneva resident of 15 years to thank all the council members for their time and effort in serving our community. And I wanted to share a special note of appreciation to Alderwoman Paschke, who has been unfairly targeted in social media posts that incorrectly attributed statements and actions to her and circulated false information about her. It has been a rough week for Alderwoman Paschke and other council members and the mayor. And I want you all to know that you have many supporters in our community and I want to publicly thank her and each of you for your service and dedication to making Geneva the amazing community that it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Let me speak. Uh, my name is Larry Betteg. I am a lifelong resident living here over 54 years. That one, you were right. There is no uh, place for violence. Um, or threats of violence. Uh, it, it's disgusting that anyone would have that, even hiding behind uh, social media. A few thoughts on the drama that uh, really Paschke has brought upon herself is that my father, uh, he was the medical director and chief of anesthesia at Community Hospital in Geneva before they merged with Delnor. Uh, we have been here since 1972, and I have served myself as an attorney and a, and a vice president of a national mortgage company, this community, for over 30 years as of February of this year. Um, as to her washing her hands, I, maybe she didn't post it. Um, I have seven Facebook groups, all of which aren't controversial, they're not political, and quite frankly, they build community. Um, I have the ability to approve on every single page who gets into the group, who's allowed to post in the group, and who allowed to comment on the group. That shows to me that there was not a lot of emotional intelligence being 
left. I believe that whatever I believe doesn't matter. You're going to make your own decisions to make your own decisions. But I have to wonder about the city having someone whose emotional intelligence is so low that she's not going to monitor something that's political. I agree with her. She has a right to go ahead and have a political group out there. But as a representative of this city, you want to drive business here. I'm not going to leave. I don't care if she wants to go ahead and hurt people. I will say this. That group and the, what they wrote about me is, is um, one thing is right, two things are wrong. It's libel. Libel is anything that's in writing and published. And they went and published two things that were false. And so that is libel. Um, and they don't have the full facts. What I do think is that not once in my 30 years of my practice have I ever cared. Not once have I ever asked anybody about their political um, viewpoints. I've never as an attorney said, what's your political viewpoints? And we're going to blackball you and we're going to serve you or we're not going to serve you. I've never refused a notary in my entire life. And I've never refused to serve anybody uh, and help people relocate into Geneva because of their political viewpoints. I think you need to take this seriously. This is a representative who has emotional intelligence that has crossed a line in her role here by not making sure that she's a good reflection of what you want to do to build this city. Thank you. Good evening, Hi. sir. Good evening. My name's Chuck Chalicki, Geneva resident for 35 years, and my concern here is the outcome, the, the how, how are we voting this way? It seems like we have a definite conflict of interest. We have someone who's very interested in and very geared towards a political party, and will, how will that work out legally if someone comes in here and loses a, a, a bid on something because they're not aligned politically? Secondly, my concern just recently is, again, on the decision-making. On August 12th, Alderman Paschke, with the uh, Verizon cell tower, and I'll quote, questions taking resident studies into decision, questions taking resident st st uh, studies into decision making, so we can't use that. And she cannot rely on feedback from the residents. Well, if she's not gonna look at the residents for feedback and she's got politically aligned, you know, if it walks like a duck and it looks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it must be a duck. So there's probably definitely some questioning on decision making. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Mr. Mayor, Kevin, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, all the aldermen and women, good to see you. My name is Tom Matson. I was born and raised in Geneva in 1961. My mom was born and raised in Geneva in 1939. My great grandfather, Matson, came to St. Charles in 1890. We started a uh, a local uh, business in the Hotel Baker. My grandfather did in 1946. My father uh, decided to relocate his portion of the business to Third Street in Geneva in 1985. We are heavily invested in Geneva, Illinois. Um, and I have personally known you, Kevin, and your family. I have spent Christmas Eves with your family. Your brother-in-law, Doug Cascaden, was in my was a, a groomsman at my wedding in 89 and I've always enjoyed your your company and your family's company your dad went to Notre Dame my grandfather here that lived in Geneva was a Notre Dame or two uh, I've been to a Notre Dame football game with your dad yep. so we go back you came to my dad's funeral your dad and my dad passed away in 2019 and I saw your brother who graduated with me, class of, class of 79, Geneva High, and shared with him my condolences. And you came over to Malone's funeral home, and I'll never forget it. You greeted me, wished me condolences, and you said, Tom, I'm going to lower the city of Geneva flag at half mast in honor of your dad for the whole weekend, and I still have the pictures. It was very moving to us. And we've been heavily invested as a merchant family in this community. Now, you and I may be on other sides of the political spectrum, but it's never cost us to be able to sit down and have a beer together and have fun. And what's happened recently has been earth shattering to us. 
where we have a public representative uh, producing a list or being part of a group that's producing a list that's casting shame and a shadow on conservative businesses. I can't speak for every single business in Geneva and the Tri-Cities, but I can speak for ours. This could be heavily detrimental, heavily detrimental to our business. And it is our right to say what our beliefs are and not to have someone broadcast particular businesses and cost, cause a pail to be cast over those businesses. So if, in fact, what I know and have read is true, I'm asking for Alderman Paschke to resign and to apologize to the public. And I'm asking you, Kevin, Mr. Mayor, to do a thorough investigation because we can't have this in, in our community. All of my relatives are buried on the east side of Geneva, and I plan on being buried there unless Christ returns in a hurry. Hopefully he will. I plan on being buried here too. My kids leave, live here. I just became a grandfather for the first time a few weeks ago. So I am asking and beseeching you and imploring all of you to do a thorough investigation. I do believe in forgiveness, but I believe that Alderman Paschke is not in the right role as a public representative. She may have other strengths and giftings as a human being, but it's not in public service. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Burns. Good evening. I'm rolling up to you. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just like when I was a kid. That's right. Yeah. I got stories, but I won't I, go there. Yeah, don't share them tonight. Yes. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank all of you people. I know a lot of you people on the council. I respect a lot of you. However, I do think there is a, a decision here to be made. I, I've been in Kane County, Geneva, since 1982, as you know, okay? I have three kids of my own, nine grandkids, and I'm proud of all of them, but I'm not proud to see what's happening here with Consul. There's a right and there's a wrong. Yes, we all have freedom of speech, I get it. I don't care who you vote for, who you like in politics, but there is a right and wrong. There is not any reason why anybody should stand up and criticize businesses. We have a city to protect, and I really think we need to do that. Um, she's a great person, she's a neighbor, Okay, off the record, she's a neighbor. But there comes a time where we have to stand up, come to the table, and let people go. That's all I'm saying. There's a lot of good people out there that are ready to get involved. And I hope you think about this. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. My name is Kylie Peters. I uh, lived in Geneva up until about eight months ago, sadly. Now I live in Batavia. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to clear up a few things um, <laughs> that um, I have not heard mentioned yet. So I am a member of the Fox Valley Activists private Facebook group in question where this list was posted. Um, and I saw the post. I actually commented on it. So if you look at the um, comment, the, the screenshots in Awake, Illinois, you can see me there. Um, I would like to point out that the list was posted by an anonymous person. It did not call for a boycott. So in fact, this list could be used by conservatives as a list of people who they do want to patronize. And in fact, they have created Public Square, which is their own app to do that very thing. Because many of us on all different sides of the political spectrum, um, like to patronize businesses that we feel stand up for things that are important to us. I know that when I see a pride flag outside of business, that makes me want to speak up for them. And um, I believe that they have every right, whoever you are, whatever side of the public, um, whatever side you are on of politics, you, um, if, if a business publicly 
makes a statement that is political, that is going to have consequences, positive or negative, and that is just the game that you play when you make a political statement. Um, going back though, so the list was posted by an anonymous person. It was not shared or commented on by Martha. Um, I, am in my, I am an admin of a Facebook group, and I can I personally attest that you do not see everything that happens in your group. I believe the post was up for about an hour and a half. Um, so Martha says that she did not see it, which I believe because I know her to be a person of integrity. Um, the Fox Valley activist group is private and it has 1.8K members. The um, Awake Illinois group that has amplified this into a big brouhaha is a public group with 26K members on Facebook and they're also on uh, Twitter or X um, doing the same thing. So they have amplified this list. This list would have been seen by very few people um, and now we all are here um, because they've shared it. So I'm, I don't know that I believe that they feel it's a harmful list. I think that um, they are using it to go to businesses that they agree with, which is their right. Um, finally, I just would like to say I feel there's sort of an undercurrent of a feeling that um, Martha is too partisan for her role. Um, I lived in Martha's ward. I'm proud to say that I voted for her. And when we were voting, we knew who she was. She has not changed. She has always been an activist in our community and has stood for the same things. And she was elected um, for who she is. And so the people chose to have her here. And I do not believe that she has done anything to compromise her role here as an elder person. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Burns, Good evening, sir. how are you all? Brian Maher, 35 years, Geneva Township, and uh, I guess I would just like to submit that irrespective of what occurs with this particular incident, perhaps the uh, ethics and the ethics standards need to be looked at by the city if uh, per staff this did not violate any ethics guidelines, perhaps the ethic guidelines need to be a little stricter. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Fred Dennis. Abraham Lincoln quoted the Bible when he said, a nation divided against itself cannot stand. And we all know black against white, rich against poor. I, I mean, there, I could come, you could all come up with maybe 20 different manufactured uh, divisions that are occurring in this country, and they're not good. And a uh, city divided against itself uh, will be, cannot stand as it should. It'll be injured. And from what I've seen and what I've heard, oh, and by the way, I'm not in any, any of these uh, groups, the ad hominem attacks that I heard from behind me, but the city will be damaged because it is being divided by these things. And the prior speaker that said the, uh, the ethics uh, committee might want to revise their ethics because what has been happening this past week, there's no way to justify it. It was wrong. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. My name is Brandon Anderson. I'm a resident of Geneva, and I just wanted to come before you to say thank you so much for your service to our community. I joke all the time that I could never be on city council because I would cry every meeting. Um, I, and I just want to say before you all that um, when we moved to Geneva 16 years ago, it was the Paschke family who welcomed us to our, this community, who made us feel welcome at our elementary school, who um, helped us uh, learn to be better parents. And we are just so thankful for Martha and for her kindness. I have only known her to be filled with integrity and honor. And I'm so grateful to know that she is a part of our city council and representing our community. Um, it's, it's been heartbreaking to, to hear the accusations against her because I know 
with all my heart that Martha cares about everyone and cares about others and is doing everything she can to advocate for um, all of our children. And I just couldn't be more proud to have her as an elected official in our community. So thank you for all that you do. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Michelle Betag. <clears throat> I've lived in King County for a long time. Hi, um, I guess, you know, that's great. She has friends that she thinks are, she's kind and caring and compassionate. Um, the post was, for the past 10 years, I've been compiling a list of local businesses whose political views I disagree with. I moved it to Google, Google Spreadsheet for easier access and included my reasons. Here's the link. So I guess my question is, or my comment is, maybe they don't feel that this hurt anybody because they're not on the list. You know, people have their whole livelihood in their businesses. People have built communities and whatever in their businesses, their money's in their businesses. So when a, a, your business gets put on a list for disagreeing politically with someone, it comes with an intent of trying to harm that business. Um, one that I don't know if anyone, you know, some of these people who are, are fine with everything, if they've read the, the breakdown of the list, you know, maybe it's fine if they're mad at Colonial Cafe or whatever, but one in particular is Excel Automotive. He's the owner of Minor Mobley, pictured in a GOP party, okay? So Minor Mobley also has Big Hearts of Fox Valley, ran by the Mobleys, see Excel Automotive. So this organization provides winter coats, underwear, undergarments, backpacks for underprivileged kids in St. Charles. So here she is pointing out that they should basically stop supporting this charity and the business. And why is that? Because he was pictured in a party at a GOP party. Other, other complaints against, uh, against someone has a Trump sign. Another person, you know, uh, Rookie's Bar has waitresses wearing Trump hats or MAGA hats. Uh, you know, obviously this came off the heels of the election. I'm sure this had something to do with the upset uh, result of the election. Uh, it, it just has no place for somebody who is a leader in the community, in my opinion. It, it's very damning to businesses. You know, thankfully, the cancel culture is ending, but on the... You know, this is, it, this is something that was considered to be cancel culture. Um, thankfully, you look at businesses like uh, Movable Feast, and they've been jam-packed with patriots going to their business. It's actually, they're probably going to send you a thank you note, actually. Um, but it, it's just, it, it, you know, the neighbors and people, I get it, you're friends with people. But this is harmful. I mean, here's this organization who provides coats to, to kids. Like, this is horrible. Anyways, I just wanted to say, maybe because you're not on the list and it doesn't provide or harm your, your, you know, your family. These are families, people who work at these businesses, people who have their livelihoods, their families. So um, thank you for your time. Thank you. My name is Sonny Ford. I've lived in Geneva pretty much all my life. Um, this is clearly a very emotional issue, and that's fine. But the important thing to remember with that is that that's why we have these processes. That's why we have these policies. And the fact of the matter is that a complaint was lodged. The complaint was reviewed. It was determined that Ms. Paschke did not violate any of the rules that were already set. She did not act outside of the terms or policies that she agreed to as an altered person. So if you have a problem with her or think that she should step down, she acted in accordance with her position. Her political views, all of that, regardless, she did what she's allowed to do by the law and policies. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Donnie and Ellen. Yeah. I'm Larry Johnson. I moved here in 79. Uh, I know a lot of you. To me, it's simple. The page on the computer said, boycott certain businesses. It doesn't matter how nice she is. It doesn't matter the rules. She said, boycott businesses 
hurt the bit. Well, uh, ladies, ladies, ladies. Then I'm, Irrespe then I'm, ir hold yeah. on, Dr. Then, Johnson. Then one, Dr. Johnson, one moment. Yeah. Irrespective of what anyone says at this podium, they have a right to say it. You are required to abide by the rules and regulations of this council meeting. That means you will not interrupt, regardless of what is said. The rules are Dr. Johnson mm -hmm. and others will speak to the chair, and that's the end of it. Otherwise, we will just clear the room and I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Anyway, Dr. To me, Johnson? Yeah. To me, it's simple. The Post said, boycott these businesses, period. That is terrible. These businesses are people, they're families. I go to these businesses, I see the kids, the college kids working there. She wants to hurt them. Simple as that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Hi, Mike Levy. I'm from Batavia, and I just would like to quickly, uh, since the crowd is not allowed to dress, uh, Mr. Johnson, Dr. Johnson, excuse Welcome me. Welcome to Geneva. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I live pretty close. I'm almost a resident, and I have family connections. But uh, I would just like to say that uh, what Dr. Johnson said was untrue. Uh, what a number of people have said here has been untrue. Martha was not responsible for the post. The Post did not call for a boycott of businesses. She did not uh, participate in the creation of the Post. She did not, uh, and if, you know, that includes uh, Michelle Badig. Um, you came up here and said, some, you read the Post, but you did not indicate who posted the Post. And so these attacks on Martha are entirely misdirected and uh, I wish people would consider the facts before they speak. Thank you very much. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I'm Amanda. I've lived in Geneva with my family for 15 years. And I have worked with older person Pashki in a range of community capacities. What I have found consistently is that she builds community wherever she goes, and she stands for the values that I often see Geneva attempting to enact, however imperfectly. She represents exactly what I like to believe that Geneva embodies and what I think many of us attempt to embody, which includes access, inclusion, research-based approaches to public policy, relationship building, dialogue, integrity, and certainly intelligence. These sorts of lists that we're discussing here tonight um, are all over the internet. Conservative groups circulate these lists all the time, including Awake Illinois. Alder Person Paschke didn't create the list, and even if she had, she would absolutely not deserve the personal insults, disrespect, and overt political harassment that has been playing out over the past week and continues tonight. People have the right to make informed choices about where we spend our money. So choosing to spend my money at a restaurant who, whose values reflect, or whose business reflects my values or whose owners reflect my values is a form of political speech. It is my right to do that. Um, so even, even, I mean, so I both want to acknowledge that Alderwoman Paschke absolutely did not post this list. And I want to say that these lists are not as damaging as I'm hearing sort of being catastrophized tonight. It's also my right to spend my money where I want, and I appreciate information about the, especially donation habits and decisions um, made by business owners. Um, and it is my right to choose to spend my money in this community where I feel that my values are best reflected and where I feel most in alignment and where I personally feel least likely to be discriminated against, which does happen to me and my students and my kids in this community. So I absolutely support <laughs> um, not strong boycotts necessarily, but lists when they are accurate that help us to discern um, how we want to spend our money. That said, I want to be clear that that's not even what Alderman Paschke did, right? Um, furthermore, these lists are not coercive. They are not threats, right? They're lists offering information 
um, about business owners and their donation habits and their political affiliations, right? We are all thinking individuals, hoping, you know? Like we can make our own decisions as part of how we practice our values. So there's no coercion here. Um, people on all sides make these sorts of decisions and we can have conversations about them and I think we can live in communities that have these sorts of lists where people get to make decisions about how they spend their money. Um, it also seems to me like people care more about, small, about businesses than about human beings here and this sometimes is a problem that I personally feel is very real in Geneva. Um, Alderperson Pashki makes this community a more humane, welcoming, inclusive, and meaningful place to live. It is part of why I still live here. And I thank her and all of you for your service. Hello. My name is Beryl McLaughlin. I grew up here. I came well, I, I came here in 1968. I now live in Batavia, but of course I know the town very well. But what I really want to talk about is um, free speech. I think most of us know that um, boycotts have been recognized as free speech. Um, all of this is recognized as spe free speech. I actually have not gone through the facts of this at great length because um, that really wasn't what interested me. What I think is that it's concerning that a, an elected official would um, be, um, a, an ethics complaint would be raised against them based on a pure free speech issue. Of course, there's the right to petition also, and I recognize that that's what's been done. But if we don't want, if we want, want to talk about cancel culture, the epitome of cancel culture is um, filing an ethics complaint based on a pure matter of free speech against a political official. If it were uh, somebody with administrative responsibility, that would be a different matter. But we all know how we deal with political um, disagreements. That's with, through votes. And an ethics complaint is just Im not the right way to handle issues like this. Thank you. Thank you. The floor is open, folks. Anyone else? And whoever's cell phone has that cool music, thank you very much for sharing that. that was... If there's nothing else, ladies and gentlemen, we will advance to new business, which is an opportunity for the city council members to share with all of us and all of you information. Alder person, mayor. I just want to wish our football team good luck this coming Saturday. Go Vikings. Anyone else on the dais? How about a motion to adjourn the city council meeting? Marks makes that motion. All in favor, please say aye. aye. We'll begin the committee of the whole meeting in about four hours. Welcome to tonight's committee of the whole meeting for Monday, November 8th, 18th, excuse me, 2024. Uh, I proudly call this meeting to order. I'm Brad Kosrog, alderperson from the second ward along with uh, Rich Marks. And I welcome everybody here tonight, especially our newest older person, Mr. Malachy. I admit I, I thought your name was pronounced a different way up until tonight. So welcome. And I learned. Um, first uh, item of business is to approve special committee of the whole minutes from November 1, 2024, and regular committee of the whole minutes from November 4th, 2024. So, uh, I have a motion from Kilberg or yes, a question? Yes, plus uh, and it can I think we just start with the motion in a second, and then yeah. if you have second. a question, I'd move second it. from Bruno. And I'd just like added a uh, proposal that I presented at the uh, the uh, November 1st meeting as related to economic development, and that would consist of a uh, proposed grant program, as well as uh, uh, the. Excuse uh, me. These are. Um, this is for the minutes, an addendum to the minutes. For, because we're approving two of them, so you're referring I'm, specifically I'm referring to the November, to the November 1st, 1st okay. meeting. And essentially it was a grant program 
and it was a three-year program with uh, one element being signs and awnings at uh, uh, 10 grants uh, per year at uh, $2,500 per, uh, per business, as well as a restoration and updating of facades uh, in the uh, business community, uh, 10 grants of $5,000 each for three years. The total would be a uh, $225,000 commitment over a three-year period. And I'd appreciate it if that would be added to the minutes that was not included. Did you get all that? I did. Without, without objection. Is there any objection to modifying the minutes? Thank you. Is it okay to do that? And, yep. Okay. It will be added. Thank you. Um, can I get an all in favor? This is on, Pat, this is on the November 1st and November 14th minutes, uh, November 4th First. minutes. November 1st. Uh, November 1st. I think. I can I can I just ask because I believe those minutes were compiled by um, Jean Fernari. Does she have input on this, or how does that work? Because there were a number of issues that were talked about um, in greater detail at the meeting than how they appear in the minutes. So I guess I'm curious what our two questions. I don't know if this all counts as a point of order, but I'm learning. Um, does Jean have some say since she's the author of the minutes? And then also, um, so Alder Person Kilberg did make very specific suggestions, um, but then there are other specifics that are also not reflected in the minutes. So I, I guess like I wonder, I don't know, where does that leave us if we start getting very specific with some things but not everything? So traditionally minutes are a summary of what occurred. They're not verbatim. So ordinarily you would not have that specificity in there. Secondly, they're the clerk's minutes, or in this case, the deputy, deputy clerk's minutes. So in all actuality, the clerk and the deputy clerk have the say over the minutes unless there is a material fact of misstatement. So that's traditionally okay. how the rules work, but it's up to the body. If they want to accept the amendment, then that would be up to this body to do so. Okay, so any vote at this point would be on the amendment. Could I just um, get input you know, it's, from the or, amendment was oh, no objection, so it's included okay. in the in the proposed minute. So it would need to be changed to add all the person Kilberg's requests. Uh, maybe I'll ask again. Are there? Does anybody want to entertain Alderman Kilberg's request to modify the minutes? I'm in favor of adding the detail. It's, I think it's relevant. It's very specific. Yep. All good? Okay. I think we'd be ready to vote then. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Present, I guess, <laughs> since I would. <laughs> How do we do that? We can, we can That's a good vote. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah. Nine in, Nine in favor and, favor and one, one voting person. present. All right, so moving on to items of business. The first one is consider draft resolution authorizing the mayor to execute the restated intergovernment agreement for Tricom Central Dispatch. So moved. Second. Moved by Bruno, second by? You can give it to mayor. Mayor. Okay, you want an intro? Yes, please. Okay. So TRICOM was formed in 1976 by an intergovernmental agreement entered into between the cities of St. Charles, Geneva, and Batavia to provide emergency communication services to police, fire, and emergency medical services departments. For your consideration this evening is a restatement of the original 1976 IGA and six subsequent amendments. The IGA represents an updated, consolidated, and modernized document that will continue to serve the needs of TRICOM. The document was prepared collaboratively by a TRICOM board working group, and the process further reinforces the cooperation that has been present for the nearly 50-year history of TRICOM. It has been reviewed by the city attorney and was unanimously approved by the TRICOM board of directors at their meeting on November 13th, 2024. Um, if you have specific questions, we do have with us Fire Chief Antonori, and then I also believe Alder Person Bruno serves on the board of TRICOM. Are there any questions for the chief or older person, Bruno? Okay. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Next is consider draft resolution waiving competitive bidding and authorize the purchase and installation of two variable frequency drives 
at a cost not to exceed $31,500. Second. Paschke and the second by Bowring. Bowring, sorry. No worries. Okay, so the fiscal year 25 budget has funds allocated towards the replacement of two variable frequency drives, VFDs, at the Western Avenue lift station. The lift station has four pumps. The VFD is wired independently to each pump and cannot operate without the VFD. Two VFDs were replaced in 2019. The recommendation for your consideration is to replace the remaining two VFDs that have exceeded their useful life of over 20 years and have been discontinued by the manufacturer. The v VFDs will need to be purchased, installed, commissioned, programmed, and placed into the SCADA system by modifying the programmable logic controller. Try Our Systems has been the city's SCADA integrator for more than 25 years and has a history of providing excellent service in the installation of control systems for the water and wastewater utility. Security of the SCADA network and responsiveness to problems is the reason staff has continued the working relationship with Try Our Systems. Due to the complex and sensitive nature of the project, it is requested that we waive competitive bidding. And with us, we do have Superintendent Van Gescom, who is happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions for Superintendent Van Gessen? Okay. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Next is consider draft resolution authorizing the purchase of a tenant M20 floor sweeper scrubber from Granger in the amount of $83,494.26. So moved. So the fiscal year 25 budget has funds for the purchase of a floor sweeper scrubber for use at the public works facility. Currently, each division sweeps, mops, and dries a section of the apparatus bay at the public works once a month. This requires a shutdown of each division lasting anywhere between two and four hours. The purchase of this piece of equipment would allow for one person to sweep, scrub, and dry the floors in about an hour, saving valuable staff time and avoiding division shutdowns. The equipment also will help the city's compliance with the MPDES permit by cutting down the amount of dirt and dust discharged in the storm sewer system. The tenant M20 sweeper scrubber will be purchased through the source well contract, utilizing Granger as the supplier. And I believe during the budget process, we had a lot of questions about what a scrubber sweeper was. So this may sound like you've done this before, but that was just when we were budgeting for it. Um, we also have Assistant Director of Public Works Landers with us to answer any additional questions. Does everybody know what a scrubber sweeper is? <clears throat> Alderman Mayor. Uh, Mr. Landers, <laughs> I have a couple questions for you. <laughs> so uh, will council members be trained on how to operate this? <laughs> <laughs> Dreams are crushed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we helped you get your steps in tonight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> all right. Assuming no more comments, uh, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next is uh, consider draft resolution authorizing the execution of an easement for parcel 12 dash 08 dash 102 dash 016. So moved. Second. Bruno and I think Bowring. Bowring. Okay. So the owner of the property at 3365 Osprey Court is looking to build a new house on the vacant lot. During a review, it was discovered that the storm sewer placed in the original construction of the subdivision is outside the agreed utility easement. Pending legal review, a new storm sewer utility easement is proposed. And again, Assistant Director of Public Works Landers is here to answer any additional questions. Any questions for Mr. Landers? No? All right. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Next up is consider draft resolution accepting professional services agreement with Stanley Consultants for the design and project management services for Geneva Business Park 3 substation construction in an amount not to exceed $145,000. So moved. Second. 
Okay, so originally the Geneva Business Park 3 expansion encompassed a switchgear and a control house and was included in the Southeast Development Professional Services Agreement. However, the load growth necessitates an entire substation, which entails a transformer, a 34 kV switches and bus work and larger construction activities. The scope of work has outgrown the PSA that is in place. The services used to date were included in the original Southeast Development PSA and the services needed to complete the substation will be covered by the Geneva Business Park 3 PSA as shown in the estimated hours exhibit of the agreement that was included in your packet. For additional questions, we have Superintendent Holton with us. Alderman. Just uh, one question of Aaron. Okay. With, uh, with, thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. uh, Without really knowing what type of facilities are going to be developed on the site, do we have sufficient capacity to deal with almost anything that might come down the pipe? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so what is? I, mean, that, that's a, I don't want to put myself on record there. Uh, uh, what we've seen so far in uh, development that's happening in GBP or the I'm sorry in the business park, as well as what's planned in the future. We think this third substation will uh, more than satisfy the capacity needs for the area. What what has changed since we originally looked at what the required capacity might uh, needs might have been? Well, originally, uh, what it, what it, what are you anticipating that's going to require this uh, this increase in capacity, and what has changed over a few years? It's driven this. So the uh, build out of the of, uh, the Route 38 Logistics Center, um, the Hillwood uh, properties up off of Geneva Drive. There's another phase coming with that. Um, we have the Bullet Campus to look forward to in the next couple of years, as well as the growth that's going to happen down in Southeast Development. So when we add all those up, we exceed. Uh, we exceed the amount of capacity we have in the current two substations, and so that necessitates the third transformer and, and switchgear lineup. When we first started out with the Southeast Development um, design, none of the none of the growth in the business park was even on the was even on the drawing board. That's all happened subsequent. So, are you going back to the original plans in 20, 2012 Then yes. Oh, okay. 2014, 2018. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the initial projections as far as cost I think go back to about 2012 yes in those very preliminary plans yes and obviously a lot has changed over the last 12 years but the the, the question I have is is that warehouses that that we're anticipating and that we've been told do they require all that uh, additional capacity uh, uh, based on what the developers are giving us for numbers they do Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Any other questions? None? All right. Please indicate. Um, what do I say? Pass it. Please indicate your approval by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? I lost my word in there. Um, next is. Consider draft ordinance abating taxes levied for general obligation refunding bonds, waterworks and sewage alternate revenue source, series 2021 A B. So moved. Second. Is that Bellring and Thank you. So I'm actually, um, if I may, uh, introduce both F and G because they are both tax abatement ordinances. Uh, so the city annually abates taxes for various bond issues using electric and water and wastewater revenues, mainly comprised of user fees. This annual process removes the debt service payments from the property tax bill and requires that the bonds are paid from the user fees collected in those electric and water sewer funds. So for fiscal year 26, the amount is $2,013,600 related to the 2021A and 2021B general obligation refunding bonds. So that is item F on the agenda. And then item G on the agenda would be 
dollars $1,318,300 related to the 2024 general obligation alternative revenue bonds uh, series 2024. And we do have Finance Director Cruz with us if you have any additional questions. So you covered F and G, but not covered H. F and, F and G, and, but not H. Okay, great. Any questions for the City Administrator or well, Finance? Director Cruz. Director Cruz. Okay. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Uh, we're on G, consider draft ordinance abating taxes levied for general obligation bonds, alternate revenue source, series 2024. We've already heard the introduction. Are there any questions in regards to this? So moved. So moved. So moved. Oh. Motion. Sorry. Bruno and Marks. Any questions? So, no, this is a decrease then compared to... Uh, Right, we're going from point. So this is the abatement. This is oh, item. Oh, we're talking about the abatement. I'm Correct. sorry. So it's a decrease I'm because a it takes ahead. it because it takes it off ahead. the property tax I'm and, and ahead. pays for it with utility revenue. Okay, we're all good. Pardon me. Do we we haven't voted? Hold all all I'll indicate. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Yeah. Now, get ready, Dean. Consider draft ordinances for estimated 2024 tax levies. So moved. And Bashke. So the estimated uh, the estimated city of Geneva property tax levy for 2024 is six million six hundred fifty nine thousand five hundred and seventy seven dollars, which is based on the assessor's estimated EAV, an increase of eleven point six five percent plus the estimated value of new growth, 0.87%, and the annual change in CPI of 3.4%. Based on this, the, it is estimated that the tax rate for all properties in the city limits will decrease from 0.515313 to 0.477896, or 7.26%. Also included in your packet this evening are the SSA levy extensions, which are based on needs within each SSA. Illinois state statute requires that the city to approve a levy estimate at least 20 days prior to adoption and to file tax levies no later than the last Tuesday in December. As such, the final levy will come before the city council for your consideration and approval on December 16th, 2024. And again, we do have Director Cruz with us if you have any additional questions. And yes, uh, Alderman Kilberg, to your point, that is a decrease in the tax rate. <laughs> right. Maybe she... <coughs> Maybe Rita could answer this question. How many years in a row? Have, are, what what has the, been the trend line as it relates to this? Uh, I think that this is the second year. I know at least two years in a row we've had a decrease. To the rate? Yes. Is that right, Mayor? Um, in your packet, yeah. on Pardon page 65, 65, there's a chart. Mm -hmm. So okay. it shows... Um, and I have it up, Rita, if okay. that helps. Yeah. So it looks like the the tax rate has been going down each, just about each year since 2006, 2016. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There might be a couple of years where it was more flat, but, right. but essentially right. it's been on a downward trend. But that's also, it's a relationship with the EAV, which has been on an upward trend. No, and I think that's important to point maybe out. Maybe since 2014, actually. So for the last 10 years. Excuse me. I think that's important to point out, and I mean, people are tax conscious, and I think that uh, the uh, the city has uh, has been frugal as it relates to the increases, and especially in light of some of the things that we're talking about for 2025, I think we can be good stewards of the, the taxpayer's dollar, and uh, I think this is important to point out, and to approve it without any discussion or any reference to this, I think would be remiss on our part so uh, and if I may just add to that so again on your in your packet on page 65 you'll see that the tax rate in 2014 which was fiscal year 16 was 0.745 and what we're estimating this year is 0.477 okay. so since 2014 so it has been a we don't want to go with overkill though I just <laughs> it's in the packet no but thank you for pointing that out and uh, 
worth noting. Thank you. I think well put, Alderman Gilberg, and I would say um, um, I appreciate it on the staff, and I think it is a testament to all the work that our staff does, Rita does, Stephanie does, and keeping everybody in line, watching expenses, and uh, taking care of our business. So thank you. No, uh, and just to add one note, uh, we did, uh, a few of us sat in on the, uh, the budgeting meetings today, and, and every line item is scrutinized, and there's discussion as it relates to every line item. And I think that's important to, that the uh, community is aware of that, and that uh, yeah, I can attest to the fact that uh, at least what I saw today, there was nothing that was frivolous. And again, we live in changing times, and the requirements from the state and technology and a lot of the things are adding costs that are sometimes unforeseen but are necessary to be in compliance. So uh, again, uh, my kudos to uh, those that pull together our budget and uh, do the good work. And uh, you've already noted them, but uh, again, I, uh, I second what you've said. Here, here. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Okay. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you, everybody. We now move on to public comment. Is there anybody here from the public that would like to speak? No. Um, next after that is new business. Um, we heard earlier, well, I'm not sure we did hear earlier from Alder Mayor because there were so many people talking in the room, but Vikings going down to quarterfinals or semifinals? No. The semifinals. Yeah. And, uh, one o'clock on Saturday versus... Carrie Grove, which will be a very vulnerable opponent. In Geneva. In Geneva. Geneva. And uh, again, I want to commend the community for their support. Those who traveled to Lake Forest on uh, Saturday, actually, I, the the Geneva uh, fan base actually outnumbered the Lake Forest fan, fan base, which I think really speaks highly of of our team and the following that they've had this season. Any other things to note? All right. That concludes new business, so we just need a motion to adjourn. So All, approve. All uh, in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed?